Hey guys, so today I want to do a quick little uh, speed test here uh, between uh, different uh, chipsets. Uh, so first we do have the Huawei Mate 9 and then we do have the iPhone 7 Plus and then we have the Galaxy S7. So Android 7.0 here and then iOS 10 here in the iPhone. We have the High Silicon um, 960 I think something. It here inside of the Mate 9, we do have uh, Samsung's Exynos uh, chipsets here, and then we do have Apple's A10 Fusion or something, I think it's called. So let's do a quick little benchmark here and see how it runs. So I do have the Geekbench uh, 4 app, which I thought I can use in this little video here to test it out. Uh, so Geekbench 4 here, here, and here. So this one has um, this one has um, eight cores, Cortex A53 and then A73 maybe or something. It's something like that. Um, yeah, Apple A10 Fusion here, clocked at 234 gigahertz. I really don't know which one's gonna be the best here. Uh, but uh, that's why I'm gonna try it out. So it's gonna take a couple of minutes uh, to run this over here. And just because the Mate 9 is the newest phone, it's gonna perform probably uh, pretty good. <laughs> the iPhone 7 Plus also, of course, we do know from experience that Apple's Apple phones usually get very, very good score because usually they have very good processors in the, in the, in the graphic processing unit. So this test is running a bunch of different things like it tried to render PDF there and the thing's gonna try some browser uh, speeds as well and then you get an overall kind of score. No idea what LLVM is, but uh, I just saw on the Mate 9 it was running some camera thing. Probably tried to maybe take some photos or something. I don't know. Uh, so when I look at how it looks like the iPhone is going to finish first. And then the Mate 9 seems like it's a little bit faster than the Exynos uh, chipset inside of the Galaxy S7. It's really interesting how, how big phones these days are getting uh, now it's Mate 9 and I also saw HTC recently with the, um, uh, I think it's called HTC U and it's going to be available in uh, around March time frame, maybe even uh, early, late uh, February. That's also the massive phone. We have the Xiaomi Mi Mix or something, which is also like a huge phone. And we do know that the new Galaxy S8 is going to be a massive phone as well. So it's really cool to see all these new phones, how, how big they are becoming. And yeah, that's a little bit interesting. Uh, let's see. We are at least about 50%. Looks like we are soon at 80% finished on the iPhone 7 Plus. And if I can remember, I don't think there was a big difference in CPU on the standard iPhone and the iPhone 7 Plus. I do know that the dual LED camera thing on the back side, that was something that you didn't have on the uh, standard iPhone 7, just in the Plus edition. So, let's see what kind of score we're getting on the iPhone. Around 30% left on the closest to Android phone. Uh, single core score 3485, and of course, it's because it is a dual core phone, not 8 core, not 4 core, not 16 core. We have almost a double uh, 5792 in multi core score. Okay. Running on iOS 10.2.1, uh, we do know that there is um, iOS. Uh, or this might actually be the latest version of iOS right now. This might be. Memory, almost three gigabytes. And then of course, some random scores here from HTML5 testing, SQL, uh, JPEG photos, 
how many photos you can take per second or something and a bunch of other things HDR photos, speech recognition 30 words per second, face detection huh, that's a lot of things and then some things that just uh, is with the multi-core so we're very very close to finishing up here on the other two phones I'm really really curious what the high silicon uh, 960 score is gonna get because from what I read online it should be a good competitor to uh, um, take uh, on board you know a good competitor compared to uh, Samsung's Exynos chipset Let's see, upload results. You don't have to. Oh, that was interesting. Okay, so uh, it looks like it's using four cores, I guess, because of the low. It doesn't use, it seems to be using eight cores, but I think how it works on uh, the Mate 9 is it has four like lower cores and four more intense cores, something. So it doesn't use all at the same time. Uh, okay, so single core score is actually lower than on the iPhone. But the magic comes when something is using multi core score. It's getting a bit higher, actually. A bit higher in the multi core score compared to the, 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 the iPhone 7 Plus. Okay, interesting here. Now getting, getting the S7 scores. So the S7 uh, falling a little bit behind there on the single core score. Um, but on the multi score area, it is also falling behind both the Mate 9 and the. Um, iPhone 7 Plus. Interesting thing though here to note is that when it, something is only probably using single core score, a single uh, single core, um, then it completely the iPhone completely dominates basically that area, and that actually might be very very good because many times I really do believe that the single core score uh, that uh, it's usually is using a single core. So um, and then of course it's not falling that much behind on a multi-core score. Uh, it's just a little bit behind the Mate 9, but nice that Android is at the top again with a phone. So quickly a video, just checking that out just a little bit for fun. If you know any other benchmarks app you want me to check out, definitely let me know about that. And yeah, have a great day.